dear students in this video we will learn some more concepts related to friction first we will learn wedges so they are simple machines so this is wedge c and d they are forming a wedge okay so these are the simple machines that can be used to lift the weights and uh, in these machines force required to lift the blocks are significantly less than its weight okay and the friction force prevents wedge from sliding out so it will not slide out because of the friction force and we want to find the force value of this force that is required to raise the weight so for that what we do we will first draw the free body diagram of this body <coughs> so in this body we have the force of weight now since when we apply this force till this block will move in the upward direction so we will have the frictional force towards the downward direction f1 is equal to mu s n1 and also we have one normal force okay similarly we have a normal force at this horizontal surface plus this uh, block will try to move in this direction okay so frictional force will be opposite so another friction force will be f2 is equal to mu s n2 now what we can do we can uh, for equilibrium we can equate the fx is equal to 0 fy is equal to 0 so in the x direction we have minus n1 plus mu s n2 will be equals to 0 and in the y direction we have minus w minus mu s n1 plus n2 is equal to 0 or we can also write in the form of resultant so we can find r2 we can find r1 and we can write in the vector form r1 plus r2 plus w should be equals to 0 similarly we can draw the free body diagram of this wedge so in which this wedge we have this force f now there are the reaction forces which will act on the top portion so here we have n2 so here we have minus n2 similarly here we have f2 so we have a reaction force minus f2 and now <clears throat> these are the frictional forces which will act towards the bottom side of the wedge so we have one normal force n3 which is normal to this surface okay so this is normal to this surface and similarly since we are applying a force in this direction so we have some opposite frictional force f3 which will be equals to mu s n3 okay so again we do the same thing we can have fx is equal to 0 summation of fx is equal to 0 that will give us mu s n2 because this is in the x direction now there is some inclination of uh, because we have 6 degree of angle so this n3 is a bit inclined okay so we will be having a uh, some angle here okay so we will have some components so we can write that so we have n3 mu s cos 6 plus sin 6 okay and plus p that will be in x direction okay Similarly, in the y direction, we have minus n2 plus n3 cos 6 minus mu s sin 6. So, we can find the components of both the forces in the x and y directions. And we can also write in the form of a vector. So, we have P R2. The resultant of these forces are R2. Similarly, the resultant of these forces is R3. So P minus R2 plus R3 is equal to 0. So this is how we can deal with the wedges. Example of friction is the self-threaded screws. This is the figure of self-threaded screws. And these square threaded screws, they are frequently used in jacks, presses, etc. And their analysis can be performed similar to the block on an inclined plane. Okay. 
and uh, we are using the principle that friction force does not depend on area of contact so we have represented this screw with this plane okay so one of the thread of the base has been unwrapped and it is shown as a straight line that is equal to 2 pi r <coughs> and uh, the distance which is moved in one rotation which is equals to l is shown in vertical okay and this is the way w and uh, we have shown the, the this force q which is equals to the force p that is necessary for uh, lifting any weight if you want to lift any weight then you will apply force p so this force q is in is such that the moment of force q is equal to the moment of force p that is q should be equals to p into a divided by r okay so if we calculate q then this force q will be equal to p okay now there is a one case which is also called as self locking case so that case will occur when uh, this angle theta s is greater than the angle theta so in that case what happens if you put some weight on this uh, uh, screw or in on this jack so it will not move downwards so that is that means that it is self-locking okay so in that case we have to apply force to lower the weight okay so this condition will occur when this angle phi s is greater than theta okay and then you need to solve for q to lower the load <coughs> and then there is another case in which when you put on the load so it will automatically try to unwind and lower the load so in that case you have to apply the force in the opposite direction so that the weight do not come downward so that will occur when phi s means the angle between the resultant and normal is less than the angle this angle theta okay so in that case you have to solve for the force q to hold this weight so that it will not come down automatically so this is how we can solve the problems that are related with the square threaded screws that are frequently used in jacks and presses now we will solve this problem related to square threaded screws so as you can see in this figure a clamp is used to hold two pieces of wood together so these are the two pieces of wood as shown and this is the clamp and this clamp has a double square thread of mean diameter 10 millimeter and uh, the pitch of uh, this thread is 2 millimeter okay. the coefficient of friction between threads is 0.3 now if a maximum torque of 40 newton meter is applied in tightening the clamp determine the force exerted on the piece of the wood <coughs> and in the second part the torque required to loosen the clamp so this is the problem first we will calculate the lead angle and pitch angle and uh, then by block and plane analogy as I discussed with impending motion up the plane calculate the clamping force with a force triangle so we will make a force triangle and we will calculate the clamping force and then with impending motion down the plane we will calculate the force required to loosen the now we have made uh, this diagram so in this diagram this uh, this is the weight w and first we are considering the up means 
suppose we are tightening the screw so for that we need to uh, up force means so the force which is applied in the up direction so now for calculating the lead and pitch angle for double threaded screw the lead is equal to twice the pitch okay so pitch is given 2 mm so we will take lead as 4 mm so this l is equal to 4 mm and uh, this uh, length <coughs> in the horizontal direction will be 2 pi r as we have already discussed so that will be 10 pi because r is 5 so from the figure you can see that 10 theta will be equals to l divided by 2 pi r so from that you can calculate the lead angle lead angle is when you take the inverse of this the lead angle will be 7.3 degree and uh, on this angle for static friction 10 phi s will be equal to mu s and it is given as 0.3 already in the problem so then this phi s will be 16.7 degree okay now block and plane analogy with impending motion will be like this so we will make the force triangle so w is downward q is on the right side and then r will complete the triangle so now this q r is 40 newton meter it is already given in the problem so r you know then from this you can calculate q that will comes out to be 8 kilo newton and uh, now this angle is 24 degree so because this is 7.3 and 16.7 when you add this that will become 24 so now this 10 theta plus phi s will be q by w so you can calculate w which comes out to be 17.97 kilometer sorry kilo newton now for calculating the force to loosen up the screw now this time we assume the q in this direction because you need q in this direction to loosen so again we will make the force triangle so w and this time q will be in this direction and r will be in this direction so now 10 theta uh, 10 phi s minus theta will be q by w and then q comes out to be 2.975 kilo newton and torque you can calculate by multiplying the r that will be equals to 14.87 newton meter so as you can see there, uh, this is considerably lower while tightening the screw you need 8 kilo newton while you are loosening we only need 2.975 kilo newton so the force required is different for tightening and loosening the screw so that's all for this thank you very much